Today, i like to give you a demo and some instructions on how to set up measurements using our PW9251A Pathwave IV curve measurement software to make basic drain current gate voltage and drain current drain voltage types of measurements on a MOSFET transistor. In this demonstration, we will be using some of these equipment and devices to make basic ID measurement. First and foremost, to work with source measure unit models, you will need either the 2902 or 2912 model. These units come equipped with two channels, which is a crucial requirement for measuring fuel effect transistors. Now, let's take a closer look at the wiring setup. Connect the high force terminals of each channel to the drain and gate terminal of the fat transistor as indicated in the diagram. The low force terminal should be connected to the source terminal and substrate of the fat transistor. Next, we will examine each component in detail. The fat transistor is placed inside the N1295A test fixture box that shields the fat transistor from external noise. To achieve precise low current measurements with femto ampere resolution, we utilize a triaxial cable to establish a connection between the device under test and the B2900 series. The terminals on the B2900B are banana jack, so use this N1297A adapter to convert the banana jack to a triaxial terminal and connect it to the triaxial cables. Please firmly insert them all the way in. Although the B2900 series can be operated from the front panel, in this video, we will be using the PW9251A Pathwave IV curve measurement software installed on this PC for easier setup and measurements. To establish the connection between the B2900 series and the PC, simply hook them up with a USB cable. Now, launch the Pathwave IV curve measurement software to perform FET transistor IV measurements. In the upper right corner of the window, click on Instruments. Look for the connected B2900B from the list of available instruments and click on the icon that appears on the right when you hover your mouse over it. If your product is not listed, you can find the product's visa address from the Keysight Connection Expert and simply copy paste it here. If the connection is successful, you should see the settling screen displayed like this. Since FET transistor measurement requires two channels for gate and drain, we will first show the display for these two channels. By selecting the gear mark, you can access the settings window where you have the option to configure settings for each individual channel and column settings that apply to all channels. In the common tab, you can choose between strip and source and sampling in the function drop-down. Since we want to perform IV measurements, we will select sweep for this demonstration. Now, navigate to the channel tab and begin by renaming the channels. Let's change the names of the channel 1 and channel 2 to get and drain respectively. Let's begin the device evaluation with the first demo, the IDVG measurement. We will sweep the gate voltage while applying a constant drain voltage to measure the drain current. To set up the gated channel, configure the gate channel to sweep from negative 500 millivolt to 3 volt in 100 millivolt steps. For this, set the source function to VER1, mod to V, and shape to DC. The VER stands for variable and is chosen when sweeping voltage or current. They are VER1 and VER2, but select VER1 when sweeping only one channel. VER2 is also used when sweeping two channels in combination. However, for now, we will focus on VER1. Next, select the sweep waveform from the sweep option. For this demonstration, we will create a waveform in which the voltage rises at equal intervals. So select the linear single. Now, Set the voltage value to sweep from negative 0.5V to 3V. In this way, the software allows you to visually check the waveforms that have been set on the right side of the screen. As you can see, the sweep interval is divided into 11 equal parts and the SMU is set to sweep at intervals of 0.35V. Since what we want to do is a final 100mV interval sweep, set the VER count to 36 which corresponds to 100 mV intervals from the common tab. When you return to the channel tab, you can see that the sweep interval has been divided into 36 equal parts, achieving a sweep of 100 mV intervals. Next, let's set the compliance to 1 microampere. 
which is equivalent to 10 to the power of minus 6 power ampere. This compliance may be an unfamiliar term for you. Compliance is sometimes expressed as limit. As you can guess from the word limit, in this context, a 1 microampere compliance means that the current flowing through the gate channel should not exit 1 microampere. This prevents the device from being damaged due to excessive current flow. If you have no idea how much current your device can tolerate, set the compliance to a small value and increase gradually in subsequent tests to prevent carbon overflow and damage to your device. Please note that compliance can also be set when current is applied. In such cases, the mode of compliance becomes voltage-based. When it comes to the measurement range, you have three options, fixed value, auto and limit. With the auto option, the SMU automatically selects the best range, so the user can perform optimal measurements without taking care of the range. However, the total measurement time might be slightly longer compared to using a fixed range. Limit is an auto range that never go below the user specified range limit. In this measurement, the length of the total measurement time is not a concern, so we will select auto range. As for the voltage and current measure, it is possible to measure the flowing current and the voltage while applying the voltage. This function allows you to know if the set voltage is actually applied to the device. Measure delay sets the delay of measurement timing from source timing. The measurement timing should be delayed based on the transient response characteristics of the device so that a stable current can be measured. Measure speed indicates how long it takes to measure each measurement point. Some SMUs and software may call it aperture time. Normally, auto or normal is fine, but if you want to accurately measure minute currents or nano ampere or less, set this to long or manually for a long time, and prevent from noise affecting the measurement by measuring for a long time at each point. Next, set the drain channel. Click on drain. A constant voltage is applied to the drain channel, so the source function is constant and 1 volt is applied. Compliance is 100 mA. Press the IV curve button to switch the screen mode so that you can see what is happening during the measurement. Then press the start button to start the measurement. Now, let's adjust the axis of the graph. We will set the x-axis to represent the gate voltage while the y-axis will represent the current. After you set series to drain current, you can see the IDVG curve like this. If you wish to modify the scale of the graph, Simply select the Details tab. You can even check the current change from the low current side to the wide current side by adjusting the Y axis to a log scale. Click this output mark to output this graph as an image. In this way, detailed settings such as color and legend are possible. If you want to see specific figures, please click on the mark in the table above. You can check the data in tabular form. Furthermore, by clicking the setting mark, it is also possible to increase the data to be displayed. You can also export in CSV format like this. Now, let's do the second demonstration, the IDVD measurement. Uncheck the log scale, then click on the IV curve to return to the settings screen. In the IDVG measurement, I only swept the gate voltage, but in the IDVD measurement, both gate and drain voltages are swept, so it is necessary to set VER1 and VER2. These operations are easier to understand by setting them and checking the waveforms than explaining them in words. So let's set them up now. First, click on the drain channel and set the source function to VER1 as shown on screen. Set the sweep interval from 0 to 5 volt. Next. Click Get Channel and Set Source Function to VAR2. Then Sweep Interval is from 0.5V to 2.5V. Then, switch the tab to Common and set the VAR2 count to 5. As you can see, the drain voltage set to VAR1 has a sole tooth waveform, and the gate voltage set to VAR2 has a 5-step waveform. This configuration results in the SMU changing the voltage of VAR2 once the sweep of VAR1 is completed. And then, VAR1 begins sweeping again. Through this automated process, we can obtain the IDVG curve at each drain voltage, efficiently capturing the necessary data for our measurements. Before starting the measurement, 
set the axis so that you can understand the measurement process well. The x-axis is the drain voltage and the y-axis is the drain current. Now, let's start measuring. Sweeping begins as soon as you press the start button. In this way, you can see 5 IV curves in total. The first curve is the drain current drain voltage curve when the gate voltage is 0.5V. And the last curve is it when the gate voltage is 2.5V. Since the drain current at the gate voltage of 0.5V is too small, Let's zoom in on the low current range. To better observe the differences, head over to the Details tab, select the Y1 axis and manually specify the scale. This way, you'll be able to visualize the variations between the gate voltages of 0.5V and 1V, making it easier to analyze and understand the data. The features shown in the video are just a glimpse of the extensive features offered by this software. If you wish to explore all functions in depth, you may refer to the reference guide by selecting the contents from the question mark on the upper right of the screen. In this video, we demonstrated how to utilize the Pathwave IV curve measurement software and B2900 series with FET transistor measurements as an example. As you can see from this video, this software allows you to easily use SMU without any programming. This will greatly reduce your measurements and analysis time and dramatically improve your R&D efficiency. Also, if you need information about parametric testing in general, including how to use SMUs to more accurately measure your device, you can download the parametric measurement handbook from the link in the video description.